Hello everyone, Greg here again. We are so excited that you are joining us today. We have such a great day planned for you for Grow Zone Large Group. We've got some singing and we've got a great story and we've got some Grow Zone Truths and call. We have so much planned for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you for being here. No matter where you are, we're excited that you're here. The, the first thing we want to start with is our memory verse for this week. And I know we've been doing this for a couple of weeks now and I hope that you're t- getting into this and you're starting to learn some some Bible verses and some scripture, uh, but we're going to keep on giving them to you so you can learn more about who God is and how much he loves you. Uh, Our verse today comes from the book of Hebrews, and it's in chapter 11, verse 1, and this is what it says. Now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. That is such a cool verse and such an encouragement for us, and we, I hope that, that you're that you will take that this week and that you'll learn it and that you'll put it into your heart so that when somebody asks you something about God, you can quote scripture to them instead of just telling them a little bit about God. Now, we're going to get ready to sing. We're ready to sing some songs this morning. But before we get into our worship, we'd like to do our call to worship. And this is a truth about how much God loves us and how much he wants us to love him. And it kind of centers us and slows us down and gets us ready to focus in on on the words that we will sing. So it's kind of, kind of, I'll say something, and you'll say something, and then I'll say something, and you'll say something, and I'll say something, and then we'll all say something together, but everything will be on the screen, so follow along and join in with me. Just one thing. Live worthy. The gospel. And everyone together says, Jesus came, died, and rose again, making a way to God. Such a cool statement, such a cool truth for us to learn. Now, I want you to invite you now to stand up wherever you are and sing along with our worship team as they lead us this morning. He's coming on the clouds, kings and kingdoms will bow down. And every chain will break, his broken hearts declare.
worship you. I worship you, I worship you, you are way you make, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are, you are way you make, a miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. in every heart, I worship you, I worship you, you are here, healing every heart, I worship you, I worship you, you are way maker, miracle worker, promise keep. Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are way maker, miracle work, promise keep. Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel that like you're working, you never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel that like you're working, you never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, Jesus, you are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God. I am sure you sounded so good wherever you are. I know I sang this morning with our, with our crew, and I love the songs that we get to sing each week and, and, and what we can learn about God, even through music and songs. Such an exciting thing. Uh, we are excited this morning to have Amy Harris as our teacher. Miss Amy does a great job, and we're, we're always thankful to have her. Uh, this morning, she's going to be teaching us an exciting story from the Bible, from, from another letter. I know we've learned a lot about the letters in the New Testament lately. This is a letter, but this one is not written by Paul. In fact, we don't even know who wrote this letter. But even though we don't know who wrote it, it doesn't take away from the important lessons that we can learn from it. Uh, in Hebrews, we learn a lot about having faith in God and faith that God is in control of everything if we, if we just believe in Him. Now, I don't want to give too much away because Miss Amy's going to tell us more about the book of Hebrews, about the letter to the Hebrews. Uh, and it's such an exciting letter. And so I hope you are excited. I know that I am. But before we get into our lesson, we like to do our Grow Zone Truths, right? They're kind of like the call to worship, but these are statements directly from the Bible, and they show how much God loves us and how much He wants us to, to love Him and share His love with others. It's kind of like the call to worship. I'll say a part, and you'll respond, and I'll say a part, and you'll respond. And they'll be on the screen, so, so join in this morning. God loves me and made me. Jesus died for my sins. Jesus is always with me. I am called by Jesus. And the last one, and everyone knows this is my favorite because we really get into this. So wherever you are, let me hear you. God gives us joy. Yes, God does give us joy, and he does love for us to have fun, but he also loves for us to learn more about him. So I want to invite you now to, to, to settle in, to listen to Amy's teaching this morning, and before she comes, I'm going to pray for us, okay? So everybody bow your heads wherever you are. 
Father God, thank you so much for this day. Thank you for a chance for us to, to gather together, even though we're not in the same room. Thank you for being with us wherever we may be. Be with Amy this morning as she teaches an exciting story from the book of Hebrews. God, just be with us as we listen. Help us to hear something new. Help us to, uh, to, to know something new about you so that when we, when we go out and play or when we go out and do whatever we're going to do, that we would share what we learn about you with others around us. God, we love you so much, and thank you for loving us. These things we ask in your name. Amen. Now, settle in. Get ready for the teaching. And I'll be back as soon as Amy's done, and we'll have a challenge for the week, and we'll do our memory verse again. Welcome to the Grow Zone, everybody. This morning, we are going to start out by reading a scripture um, in Hebrews. Now faith is the confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. And without faith, it is impossible to please God because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and he rewards those who earnestly seek him. So today we're going to be talking about faith. And there are three questions that we're going to be able to answer after, after our lesson today. What is faith? Why do I need faith? Why have faith? Um, and also, who are some good examples uh, of people who've had great faith? So we're going to talk about all of those things. But first, let's check in with the barn friends and see what they have to say about it. Trackers of Faith, featuring Duke and Luke, the Barn Brothers, Penny, the cold crack and tech savvy gal who is quick on her feet, Walker, the big hearted handyman who uses his mechanical know how to lend a helping hand, Jenny, the fun loving biblical brains of the operation, and Milton. This super sassy swine has been fitted with the latest in animal communication technology. Join this crew of high-tech heroes as they sow truth, know truth, and grow truth. Directors of Faith! I just really can't believe that you guys rely on the farm for so much. I mean, one bad season and you're in major trouble. You won't be able to sell your crops to earn money. And you really won't have any food either. Doesn't that make you uh, kind of nervous? I don't really think of it that way. Although it's true that while we put a ton of work in planting and planting, there actually isn't anything we can do to make the crops grow. We can't make it rain. We can't control what kind of insects show up. And we can't do anything to stop bad weather like a late frost or a tornado or even a flood. We sow, but then we have faith. Faith, huh? Yeah, faith. We have faith that God has control over all the things that we can't control. We have faith that if we're faithful to sow, he'll be faithful to bring a good harvest. Wouldn't it be easier to do something that was a sure thing? There are all kinds of possibilities that are more certain than sowing seeds and just, I don't know, praying that the right combination of conditions will happen. When Duke, Luke, Jenny, Penny, and I decided to take on the farm from Duke and Luke's grandfather, we talked about that. While we were praying and trying to decide if it was what God was calling us to do together, we started reading Hebrews. Of all the books in the Bible, it's the one that's the most about faith. Apologies for my ignorance, but I haven't read Hebrews yet. What's it about? There's all kinds of amazing wisdom in there. But one of the most meaningful things to us is the Faith Hall of Fame in Hebrews 11. It basically lists out all of the Bible heroes like Noah, Abraham, Sarah, Joseph, and Rahab and says that the thing that they all have in common isn't that they're perfect. It's that they live by faith. We wanted to be counted among them. So you chose to have faith. Yep. We chose to live by faith all those years ago when we took on the farm. And we're still living by faith each growing season. It's like the faith we have in our walk with God. We practice faithfulness to God's mission regardless of our circumstances. We know that he is good and worthy of our praise. Hey, Walker, there you are. Sorry to interrupt, but there's been a huge breakthrough on the map front, and we need you back at the barn. No problem. Can't wait to hear about it. Great to see you guys. Found him. Hey, Walker. Okay, the gang's all here. Duke, you want to give the update? Sure thing, brother. 
The long story short version is that the guys we ran into back in the New Testament were Grandpa Woodrow and his friend when they were a lot younger. They had been mapping out this big story of scripture in the Bible, but were never able to finish the map. It kind of freaked them out to run into us, and on top of that, the map blew away one day when they were out in the field. Interesting. So what does that mean for us exactly? Well, Grandpa Woodrow, Luke, and I were talking, and well, if you guys are up for it, we were thinking... We were thinking that we could all go back together and finish the map. Hey, I was getting to that part. I know, but you were talking kind of slowly, and I'm excited. So, what do you guys say? Are you in? Of, of course, course we are. are. Today we're going to be studying truths from the book of Hebrews. And Hebrews is one of the books in the Bible that we're not really sure who wrote. Um, the author is unknown, so we could just call him Mr. Anonymous if we needed to. But God breathed in that scripture, um, told the person to write the words. It was inspired by God, so it's, it's true. Um, and it gives us a great example of what faith is and some people who've had great faith. So let's look at our first uh, question. What is faith? Well, faith is um, the confident assurance that what we hope for is going to happen if our hopes are in line with God's will. So it's like when you can't see something, but you know it's going to happen anyway. Think about at night when you go to bed um, and the sun is down and you, do you ever wonder, is the sun going to come up? Do you have to stop and think about that? No, we just take it for granted, don't we? Because we have faith that the sun is going to rise again tomorrow, just like it always has, right? It's not something that we can see. Hopefully you're asleep when the sun's rising, um, but we, we can't see it yet. It hasn't happened yet, but we know that it's going to. So that's, that's kind of a, an everyday life example of faith. Um, we can't see God with our eyes. Um, we can't touch him. Um, but we can see the evidence of what he has done for us all around us, right? Create everything that he's created. Um, that, that helps us see what God has done for us, right? Um, and if we, if we learn how to listen to God, we can hear his voice. One of the main ways you can hear God is by reading the Bible and memorizing Scripture. That way you'll always have those words that come straight from Him with you all the time. So that's a great way to do it. Um, another way to um, practice listening to God is through um, your Christian leaders and teachers and pastors, your parents. Um, we can listen to others that are wise and who have great faith and um, see what they can teach us. Um, another thing that we all have, if you'll listen for it, is your conscience. Um, that little small voice that will sometimes tell you, no, you don't need to do that, or that's not the right thing here, this is the right thing for you to do. That's your conscience. And sometimes the Holy Spirit will speak to you um, through your conscience, but you have to practice. You have to learn to listen for that. Um, <clears throat> so those are good ways to uh, practice your faith. Think about, um, let's do an example like this. Hold your hand out in front of you and blow. Blow again. Did you see your breath? Did you see my breath? You could feel it though, couldn't you? It's kind of like the wind when the wind blows. You can't see the wind, but you can see what the wind what the effect the wind has on other things. That's kind of like the Holy Spirit. Even though we don't um, see it, we believe in him because we can feel him. We can feel the, the evidence that um, kind of like the way that the wind blows. <clears throat> the next question we're going to talk about is why have faith? Why is it important to have faith? Why is faith, it sounds like something good, right? But why is it important for us to have faith? Well, the Bible gives us three scriptures that tell us exactly why we should have faith, and I'm going to read those for you. The first one is in Ephesians 2, 8, and it says, For it is by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God. So what this is saying is um, 
we, Jesus and his grace and having faith in that, that's what saves us. That's what saves us for our sin. We, we want that salvation, right? We don't earn it. We can't do enough good things, good deeds um, to earn that. It's just given to us freely, but we have to accept it. And we have to have faith that Jesus is going to do what he says. He's going to forgive us of our sins if we, if we trust in him. Uh, another verse that, where the Bible explains why it's important for us to have faith is in James chapter 2, verse 17. It says, So also faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. So it's telling us that good works will come as a result of our having faith. Um, if we have faith, the Holy Spirit will give us the power. He'll equip us. He'll give us what we need to do good things for other people, to do wonderful things for the people around us and for the world. And we want to do that, so we definitely want to have faith so we can participate in those good works, right? And then at the end, we end up receiving a blessing from that too. And then the last um, verse that I want to point out to you that explains why we need to have faith, it, it comes from Hebrews uh, chapter 11, verse 6, and it says, And without faith it is impossible to please him, for whoever would draw near to God must believe that he exists, and he rewards those who seek him. So it pleases God for us to have faith. And we all want to please God, right? Um, it's impossible to please him if we don't have faith. And basically what that saying is, if you don't believe in God, and then you're, you're never going to please him, and you don't have faith in him. So you've got to have faith in those things that you can't see, right? And have faith in God, and that will, that will please him. We'll grow to trust him more and more. And God rewards us with that, when we have that growing faith. We'll receive all kinds of blessings. So finally, the third question we want to answer today is, who is an example of faith? Well, we have lots of good examples of faith in the Bible, right? Um, <clears throat> I'm going to read you some uh, out of the book of Hebrews, chapter 11, and there are going to be lots of names um, from probably our Bible trackers uh, series that you're going to remember. You're going re to remember hearing stories about these people and their great faith. So let me begin by reading for you from Hebrews chapter 11. So y'all listen carefully and see if you can recognize any of the examples of faith, okay? Now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. This is what the ancients were commended for. By faith, we understand that the universe was formed at God's command so that what is seen was not made out of what was visible. By faith, Abel brought God a better offering than Cain did. By faith, he was commended as righteous when God spoke well of his offerings. And by faith, Abel still speaks even though he is dead. By faith, Enoch was taken from this life so that he did not experience death. He could not be found because God had taken him away. For before he was taken, he was commended as one who pleased God. And without faith, it is impossible to please God, because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. By faith, Noah, when warned about things not yet seen, in holy fear built an ark to save his family. By his faith, he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness that is in keeping with faith. By faith, Abraham, when called to go to a place he would later receive as his inheritance, obeyed and went, even though he did not know where he was going. By faith, he made his home in the promised land like a stranger in a foreign country. He lived in tents, as did Isaac and Jacob, who were heirs with him of the same promise. For he was looking forward to the city with foundations, whose architect and builder is God. And by faith, even Sarah, who was past childbearing age, was enabled to bear children because she considered him faithful, who had made the promise. And so from this one man, and he as good as dead, came descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and as countless as the sand on the seashore. 
All these people were still living by faith when they died. They did not receive the things promised. They only saw them and welcomed them from a distance, admitting that they were foreigners and strangers on earth. People who say such things show that they are looking for a country of their own. If they had been thinking of the country they had, they had left, they would have had opportunity to return. Instead, they were longing for a better country, a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared a city for them. By faith, Abraham, when God tested him, offered Isaac as a sacrifice. He who had, had, he who had embraced the promises was about to sacrifice his one and only son, even though God had said to him, It is through Isaac that your offspring will be reckoned. Abraham reasoned that God could even raise the dead. And so, in a manner of speaking, he did receive Isaac back from death. By faith, Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau in regard to their future. By faith, Jacob, when he was dying, blessed each of Joseph's sons and worshipped as he leaned on the top of his staff. By faith, Joseph, when his end was near, spoke about the exodus of the Israelites from Egypt and gave instructions concerning the burial of his bones. By faith, Moses' parents hid him for three months after he was born because they saw he was no ordinary child, and they were not afraid of the king's edict. By faith, Moses, when he had grown up, refused to be known as the son of Pharaoh's daughter. He chose to be mistreated along with the people of God rather than to enjoy the fleeting pleasures of sin. He regarded disgrace for the sake of Christ as of greater value than the treasures of Egypt because he was looking ahead to his reward. By faith, he left Egypt, not fearing the king's anger. He persevered because he saw him who is invisible. By faith, he kept the Passover and the application of blood so that the destroyer of the firstborn would not touch the firstborn of Israel. By faith, the people passed through the Red Sea as on dry land. But when the Egyptians tried to do so, they were drowned. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell after the army had marched around them for seven days. By faith, the prostitute Rahab, because she welcomed the spies, was not killed with those who were disobedient. And what more shall I say? I do not have time to tell about Gideon, Barak, Samson, and Jephthah about David and Samuel and the prophets, who through faith conquered kingdoms, administered justice, and gained what was promised, who shut the mouths of lions, quenched the fury of the flames, and escaped the edge of the sword, whose weakness was turned to strength, and who became powerful in battle and routed foreign armies. Women received back their dead, raised to life again. There were others who were tortured, refusing to be released so that they might gain an even better resurrection. Some faced jeers and flogging and even chains and imprisonment. They were put to death by stoning. They were sawed in two. They were killed by the sword. They went about in sheepskins and goatskins, destitute, persecuted, and mistreated. The world was not worthy of them. They wandered in deserts and mountains, living in caves and in holes in the ground. These were all commended for their faith, yet none of them received what had been promised since God had planned something better for us so that only together with us would they be made perfect. So as I read those verses from Hebrews, you probably recognized a lot of those names, didn't you? Abraham, Moses, Noah, um, Sarah, lots of those names. We've, we've studied them and learned their, their stories and how much faith they had. Um, as I think about those people um, from Scripture that have showed a lot of faith, I also think about people in my own life. And so take a minute and think about those um, people in your life that have uh, shown great faith. Maybe your parents or grandparents or your small group leader or pastors, teachers. Um, all of those people together, uh, even the ones who, who died way before you were born, um, the Bible talks about them as being a cloud of witnesses for us and our faith. Let me read you this one last verse from Hebrews. It says, Therefore, 
Since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles, and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinners, so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. So as we um, learn from the men and the women of faith, both those in um, Scripture and those in in your life right now, um, we... Uh, it, they, they, they encourage us and they inspire us um, for our own faith to grow. Of course, most of all, we need to look to Jesus, right? He is the reason for our faith, and he is the one who makes our faith grow in our hearts in the first place. So um, <clears throat> now that you know what is faith, why do we need to have faith, who are some examples of faith, I just hope that, um, that you'll take the time to think about this this week and, and look around you for those that are encouraging you in your faith and listen to that small little voice um, when the Holy Spirit's talking to you, the, um, your conscience, um, to help you uh, make wise decisions. So now we're going to bow our heads and pray. Jesus, thank you for all that you've done for us. Take these seeds of truth and grow them into great faith for your glory. In your name we pray, amen. What a great lesson on having faith. It was so cool to see so many different people from from all parts of the Bible, all parts of God's story, that no matter what, they had faith in whatever circumstances or whatever difficult times they were in. It was so cool to see that. I don't know about you, what you learned, but for me, it was exciting to see faith lived out in so many different lives and so many different circumstances. I know that's something that I can learn from because sometimes I do forget to have faith. If things are going bad or things are tough, I might forget that God is in control and that God is, God is going to help me through whatever circumstances I may be going through. Maybe that can be our challenge for this week is just to remember that no matter what, God is with us in everything that we do and everything that we, we are involved in. Now, before you go for the day, we would love to do our memory verse just one more time, and it'll probably be on the screen for you, so maybe you'll say it with me this time, okay? But it is, remember, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1, and it says this, Now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. Hebrews 11, verse 1. Now, I want to challenge you this week to, to write that down and, and put it where you'll see it every day. Say it to a, a friend or say it to a family member or just say it to God because God loves to hear from us. He loves for us to quote his scripture. He loves for us to learn his scripture. So work on that this week. So maybe next week you would have this one remembered when we get a brand new one. Wherever you are, whatever you do for the rest of your day, enjoy your day. We will see you again next time.